Um, hello, dear Katya. Very, very nice to chat to you here, and thank you very much for your time. Um, so, just briefly, we are doing uh, Musicians in Isolation. Uh, this is a project that I'm doing together with the Russian Art and Culture, um, and we are very privileged to have you. You are um, a great, great pianist. You know, for those who don't know, Katya is an extraordinary uh, gifted pianist, and um, she's also the founder of the London Piano Festival, performs everywhere and um, uh, is a really, really great, uh, great performer. So it's for me wonderful to see you here, Katya, and thanks again. And we just start, I think I would start by asking uh, about, of course, the, the crisis. Um, how are you? Are you feeling positive or has it affected you? Um, I'm sure it has affected you, but just just maybe tell, tell us a little bit, how are you? Uh, well, I think it's it affected absolutely everyone, especially in in arts world. As I don't think there is one person who who is not affected by it in some way. Uh, well, it's been already what like uh, two months, and the time flies so quickly since it started. So I think uh, I go through different phases. I think probably like again, like many people, I think the initial disbelief of what of what is happening to us and, and to everyone's pace of life. I mean, for me personally, I lead a very active life and, and um, I, I have a husband and seven-year-old daughter. So uh, we, we are used to a very vibrant, active life. We never have quite actually enough time to be home and spend time with each other and uh, of course I'm used to some traveling being away from home so suddenly we are all at home and and, and it's a completely different pace and perspective on on things and I, I think the most challenging for me is the unknown I, I, I have a, I have a feeling it hasn't yet even though it's been two months it still hasn't sunk in that how affected the our profession might be uh, for months to come I, I, I think I find that probably the hardest thing uh, apart from financial difficulties <laughs> potentially as well and uh, but of course the I think like for a lot of musicians performers it's slight kind of loss of identity suddenly mm. is because this is not just a job yeah it, it is way of li life way, ways of living and of course we are well, those who play on stage it, it's like such important part of life and and the adrenaline the uh and and preparation for some big events and giving something such big part of yourself and, and um, it's 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 quite tough. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to sound negative, but no, I no, I, I totally understand, yeah. and I think the the uncertainty is the the most uh, kind of unnerving. There, I, I also find that I worry about what is going to happen. But do you have any prognosis, by the way? Do you do you have any scenario? Maybe ideal scenario. I mean, I think ideal everything goes back to normal. But what is your scenario? Do you have anything in head? Well, scenario, of course, depends on what what's happening health-wise in the world. I think that is also very hard to know. And how, say, if we have this virus around for for a long time, how countries are going to react to it? And I, my 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 feeling is that it can't. The the life in lockdown, isolation, it just can't go on forever. For any, any countries is just not possible. I think uh, unless something catastrophic happens, I think people will just need to get out. People will need to get on with things in life. And, and I actually think people will just make a choice to move on and continue somehow. Um, and, uh, but as, as, in terms of sort of arts world and our profession, musicians in particular well um i think you know there is no quick quick fix i mean it will all sort of also speaking to some 
uh, people in PR world these days and sort of music mm -hmm. industry, they all say that, well, at least in this country, things will almost certainly not get back to normal this year, mm -hmm. uh, which is quite daunting, of course. And, and um, so my, my personal feeling, it's like a gut feeling, is, is that it, it, we will get back to normal. It just will take time. That, that, mm -hmm. that's my I mean I, I, there will be some big challenges I think because arts world so dependent on funding on investments on sponsorships okay. and I think because of the crisis it we might see some pretty devastating things happening closures you know of probably festivals and and and, and well at least temporary yeah. the, the music sort of organizations which can't really continue in the same way uh, because this it just can't not affect uh, yeah, sure. our profession so um but um yeah my, my of course my hope is that somehow things will just start to improve quicker than expected and 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 uh, i i really hope for it you know because you hear so many pessimistic yeah. things around and, 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 and I sort of have this feeling but actually maybe it is possible also that things can exceed like exceed our expectation they can be better than yeah. than but I'm for me I, my husband thinks I'm very negative but for me I, I, I prefer <laughs> <You're positive. laughs> I, I prefer not to have high expectation and then I prefer to be pleasantly surprised <laughs> <laughs> rather than it's, know, it's rather a, I, I share I share I share you which actually leads me to the next question I mean I know that you have planned and already the program is out for the next London Piano Festival what what is going to happen uh, have you everything I, now fine or have you can I don't know what if you tell if you can tell us if not it's fine I, I, I can't tell because mm -hmm. we haven't yet made the decision right. um, mm -hmm the uh, we are going to make decision very soon because of course time is pressing the only thing i can say it's most likely that it won't uh, be in the same uh, format mm -hmm. or shape as mm -hmm. previously announced because the it's very unlikely that concerts can go back to completely normal this capacity year. holes in in beginning of october Mm. but but i can't really say more we are still hoping to 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 have something yes happening. of course of course uh, just for the audiences uh, i mentioned before the london piano festival um is a wonderful festival happening in, in king's place in october and um, this year was uh, meant to be a remarkable program also one of my great friends and good pianist uh, Haladim Haladinka is playing you know. and, and of yeah. course um, Katya and Charles who is um, another co-founder Chazon um, so we'll hope it will be something but in a different format which brings me to the next question about the format uh, and of course now is everything is online we are chatting to you online it's like a different parallel reality everything and it's a lot online so first of all do you listen or have you listened to something online or do you think okay it's not for me um, I'm not the one who is enjoying this as a performer or, or, or tell us a little bit about your experience. Okay, that, that, uh, that is an interesting topic for me because I have to say I haven't listened much. Mm -hmm. I, I, um, I think this realization of this new reality is for me it's arriving quite slowly. I, I'm, I, I'm sort of when I started noticing things being put online in people's living rooms and sort of people playing in their casual wear and, and um, done on quite sort of primitive recording devices oh. on phones with not particularly good sound, sometimes not on very good pianos. I, I have to say I'm not like it doesn't fill me with excitement now. I, so I, the answer is I haven't listened very much, but I totally respect people's uh, reasons for, for doing that because mm -hmm. uh, because I think one of the reasons is it's very hard to find uh, motivation for, for a lot of musicians to to we are so used to work towards something concert uh, well I guess or recording and yeah. and, and 
and, and without it, I think, it, well, myself including, it's unbelievably difficult to, especially when it's such an uncertainty and long-term uncertainty. It's not like yeah. you can just temporarily be in the state and then you know you're going back to normal. You, you really have complete uncertainty about the future. So, so that's why I, I totally respect and there are some fantastic musicians who are putting uh, videos online. Uh, so the answer is, I, uh, for me at the moment, it's not quite for me. I think if it's done in a very, on a good equipment in, in, with a good sound, uh, I can see sort of my views changing gradually because also I, I was just thinking today actually that if, you know, even in autumn, there are still no concerts. I, I think um, I might get seriously depressed mm -hmm. and, and, and I just suddenly think it's kind of almost like, well, you know, if that's the only option is the online thing, you know, I, you know, it's still a performance of a kind. It is something about changing your mindset, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's not because it's bad or good, but in current times, if there is no other alternative, it's still better than nothing. I just, uh, I mean, I've already been asked by a couple of festivals where I was supposed to play in autumn if mm -hmm. how I would feel about uh, recording in an empty hall. And, but you see, for, for me, this is, like for me, it's better than playing in your living room kind of thing unless yeah. you have an amazing piano and sort of nice equipment yeah music. yeah yeah nice good equipment I, I just I, I find myself and I think with a lot of people my attention span if I see something like this I, I I'm just I can't concentrate for a long time you know mm -hmm. if somebody playing and there's so much out there it's it, I, I think that's the difficulty you know also the difficulty is that there is so much fantastic stuff out there for free Yes. to watch to listen on youtube on and, and i'd sort of much rather i sometimes go and listen to some great uh, you know recordings there are some amazing things that so many things that i haven't never listened to and and uh, now i can of course you know, from yes not doing after, but you know that uh, to, to i don't know it's it's a very difficult thing to to know how it's gonna take off but i think it will because it, you know uh, but the question is like you asked me how also how many people will listen how many people are ready yes. to pay for when, yes. when for yes. instance exactly it, that that is i think what is also interests me a lot because um i think people are now used to ex exactly streaming everything for free people are playing recitals almost like every day um or some people every day and they yeah. they're not the best quality in terms of the sound but as you mentioned they're great pianists who who, who do it and yes. uh you know and of course then the question is would you would you go i think i'm asking about the younger audiences really because i think the older audiences they would never say they prefer online but i think maybe younger audiences uh, and this is a big question for me as well you think you mean like younger people will have more interest for classical music because well, it's online? Well, I think it's going to go two way, and um, maybe it's interesting if you have a view on that. Um, with it either people just going to assume that everything will be streamed, you know, towards them in their living room, and nothing will happen, and it will be just fun, or when it stops and people essentially won't stream as much online and hopefully play <laughs> if that happens uh so maybe those younger audiences will go to the concert hall so which of those is likely um if you have any view that is that is very tough i mean i i don't know if it's gonna change hugely i have to say i don't know mm -hmm. just um uh just because it's online hmm I, I mean, I, I, I hope you're right, so we can get this kind of positive mm -hmm. of this situation. Uh, but again, it's how to reach the younger audiences. I mean, why, for instance, would they suddenly go to listen to much more classical online? They can do it anyway, can't they? 
Well, I, 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 I mean, it's just because it's everywhere now. And, and it's, yeah. it's, I think before only the like pop musicians really were streaming and now also classical music uh, musicians are streaming. So that's why I was wondering if they have now more access to the classical music and it's in, a, in the, in the Access, format. yes, but, mm. but, but yeah. I'm not sure that necessarily mean they'll be listening more. <laughs> yeah, because, right. yeah. but I mean, there's more choice, but does it mean they'll be more popular? I mean, maybe if there is some kind of, good way of reaching sort of to making it sound but as i say i mean th there are so many questions about this online thing it's 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 there is free stuff out there there is this per people putting their own personal uh, little videos i mean maybe sort of through friends it, like, like actually this home yeah. videos could, re could reach more people because they just reach some say facebook friends who are not necessarily classic music lovers but they will glance because it is their friend on Facebook who is playing, so they might, you know what I mean? It, yes, of course, of course, of course. Through personal connection, they might listen, not mm. because they have interest in classical. So maybe that can reach kind of, you know, more people. Mm -hmm. But but there is one aspect, and again, this is free. But what? But it's it's when it's done because you know we musicians we have to get paid from somewhere, sure. and we shouldn't have to <laughs> pay for free all the time. And and. And that is a big question. I think a lot of concert halls also facing challenges and festivals is mm -hmm. if it's quite expensive way of filming professionally, doing the sound streaming, somebody has to pay for that. And, and uh, you know, and, and, and to listen to these professionally made recordings, also you would benefit from a good uh, sound system, right? Because, At home, yes. Yeah. Yes, that's another big problem as well, because people mostly probably listen to their laptops, computers, and it's not very good yeah, sound. It's, so, it's so, not sophisticated at all, exactly. No, so will people get, again, better, maybe people start buying more sophisticated equipment, and then they can, you know, if, if, if you can have this, like, the best possible experience from streaming, like, sound-wise, then... Uh, uh, that might take off. I, I, there are different views on it. Sorry, I keep going. Mm -hmm. about it no, it's time, very interesting. Absolutely. I, I find this interesting, sorry, because there's also somebody uh, mentioned that, of course, when people go to concerts, they, they go to concert hall, say Wigmar Hall, they, there are only that many seats, right? So people pay, I don't know, 550 seats. I don't know how many, mm -hmm. many seats there. And so everybody pays. So when you put something online, say, and, and they charge five pounds for... To, you know listening online but then if it's advertised on all so social media there can be people tuning in from all over the world so so potentially even though you think well mm -hmm. you know who will be but it can be completely different audience and can be completely different people actually sure. possibly tuning in and you can possibly raise quite good money i it's just and the unknown, isn't it? And and I mean something like well, Wigmore Hall actually they are starting the yes. concerts. Mm -hmm. That's from the empty hall. So that uh, probably we will see how well that will go because of course the brand of Wigmore Hall is also very BBC established. and BBC. Of course, that yeah. will make sure that the sound quality is um, unbelievable. Yeah. And yes, uh, actually that's another thing. The radio. I mean, they should be hopefully doing a lot of things because that maybe is uh, today's kind of, it, it, it's an important thing. I think radio could do more because they, I think when people listen to radio, they're much more actively listening, well, unless they're putting it in some kind of background. Mm -hmm. But the, if there is live concert, they're more likely to, I think, listen more intensively. As I say, the, the visual is so common these days it's, it's just there everything is available and you know i don't i really think people concentrate less when they yes just watch, on just the computer. watch. exactly yes totally agree totally yeah. Agree. yeah very interesting and um we talked about the briefly before we started uh, about the online teaching so i know mm -hmm. it's um hard but um so um, do you actually i mean of course it's valuable but what are the biggest challenges if you if you let's say we put the systems aside or technical because we were mentioning it's quite exhausting actually to sort of to yeah. get energy out um well, it's, I mean, the, yeah, I mean, the, one of the biggest challenges is, of course, the quality of sound. So, you know, 
it can never really be the same as unless you have some amazing way of doing it. Mm -hmm. um, it. It can never be the same quality. So you kind of have to, I think that's why it's also tiring. You have to really listen so in, intentively and, 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 and adjust your ear to not perfect circumstances. So you kind of have to, uh, and, and also it's like with concert maybe because there is no really live interaction. You have to, mm -hmm. It, there is still this kind of dead screen in front of you, you know. Yeah. Uh, um, one of biggest challenges is for me sometimes like technical things. If I want to show something uh, purely technical, I, I, I can't normally I demonstrate, you yeah. know, and I can even sort of take and show them sure, something, you know. Yeah. You, you can't do it. Um, it's very different type of lessons, I just find. Yeah. generally <laughs> but um <laughs> going back to your practice you mentioned you start you said that you know you of course have concerts and you motivate yourself do you see that now is the time to explore new repertoire or do you actually take a break i know many people took a break um what is your uh, routine at the moment if you have any yeah we ha yeah i have routine uh, my routine is very much um uh sort of um, enforced by my seven-year-old daughter yeah, sure who who my husband and i have to homeschool and 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 it's very challenging and very intense and uh so i don't have a lot of time to myself to mm -hmm. do biggest challenge is just finding headspace for uh, as you know yourself being a pianist you, you need kind of to, to, to be able to go in, in it's very intense yeah. and concentrated process when, when you practice so um, I find the fact that there is always noise around at home everybody is at home mm -hmm. and I normally have like a I don't know one hour slot and then I have to cook or, or I have to do something, you know. Uh, it, it is, it's very different from uh, sort of our normal daily life in, in, in a uh, normal life, you know. But, but I uh, now feel uh, also that this is my chance to spend with my daughter. I've always felt guilty that I'm not spending enough time with her. And now I can and, and we can do things together like a lot, yeah yeah a lot of cooking and a lot of things that we normally never get around to doing and i i don't practice as much and it's just not possible at the moment and actually i i i, I had at the beginning felt very bad about it and 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 uh, yeah i had to process this and 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 now i've accepted it and and i and i practice when i can when i feel like it hopefully i won't forget how to play the piano okay. I, I, I i i i i i do play quite a lot of new things i i if i feel like i can't really do proper concentrated practice i just play some pieces that i want to play or like i was exploring some Haydn sonatas i found some volumes and realized i don't know some of them and it was very nice Thing to do okay. uh, so yes no it's it's wonderful and just i think we are sort of moving um closer to the end because it's quite a few questions you have answered um but any sort of interesting books you would recommend now you know to read uh, something that you really love um or I don't know any sort of theatrical show that you've watched and then it's now of course available i mean everything is now available uh, uh, maybe a couple of suggestions that would be interesting i well in terms of book i just finished uh, i've been reading ibsen plays because mm -hmm. I, I just realized i haven't really read ibsen before so i just finished doll's house it's a fantastic book so i am um, again it, it kind of goes through phases sometimes i just i've um I just don't feel like reading and just don't have the enough attention span. Uh, I, I've, uh, my husband and I, we signed to the British Film Institute, 
um, scheme. So we, we are trying to catch up on some classic films which we haven't watched before. So we've been watching some Bergman and Fellini, uh, things like that. And um, we watched the production of Janair and National Theatre. We, we, my husband particularly is a big theatre fan. So yeah. he's educating me a little bit. So we, we want to watch actually tonight a play from a uh, complicity theater called the encounter so mm -hmm. rave reviews and it's only until 25th of may you can watch it on youtube mm -hmm. so yeah i'm doing some yoga that that's what i can i can say that when i have a moment what really helps me a little bit of meditation i think now is time like no other it's about trying to be in the moment trying to for me what what really helps me go through this time i have to say is really thinking day at the time sometimes even hour at the time uh, i i find thinking long term because a lot of us are so used to thinking ahead musicians yeah. as well i think always kind of what's happening next year what you, that it, not having that certainty is something completely new territory so mm -hmm. uh just i know it sounds very cliche but it's, being grateful for what we have and and, and uh, there are many things to be grateful for definitely for yeah. me so and and short-term tasks <laughs> and and, <laughs> yeah. and be, being in the moment and and yeah enjoying as much as possible Oh, fantastic. Well, thank you so, so much. It's been an absolutely pleasure talking to you and um, I hope you stay positive. I think it's important yeah. to stay positive. I also talk to you and I also find things that motivate me and I'm sure it's very useful because many people yeah. are in the same situation and the more yes. we talk about it, the, the better actually we feel because you can yes. be very sort of zoomed in yourself and then nothing happens and, and it's of course terrible. So thank yeah. you very thank you very thank much you. for your time thank you it's been a pleasure